everyone. Welcome to the Father Fury Show. I'm me, this one. I'm Father Fury, and this is... Stephanie. Stephanie. Anyway, welcome to the show. This is our first show of hopefully plenty. Um, the wonderful brains at Prunks for Progress uh, decided that it would be a brilliant idea to give me a show. Um... That's pretty fucking scary. And what's even scarier is I thought it was a brilliant idea to include Steph onto our show. Uh, my better half. Anyway, again, welcome to the show. Uh, we hope to have some cool stuff on here, and we hope to give a yet another voice to the unheard left, the actual left, uh, that gets vilified and uh, mythologized uh, within media. Because we're somehow... Um, Schrodinger's protest uh, people. Uh, at the one point, we're sad little snowflakes that need, need safe spaces and don't touch us, but at the same time, we're also dangerous people that put concrete in milkshakes and hit cops. Is it okay to vape on your show? Yeah, it's okay to vape on my show. Oh, hi! Ooh. So, yeah, <laughs> welcome. Let's hope we can... Uh, kind of tip over some of those sacred cows while we work on while we do this show anyway again i'm father fury and a little bit about me not only am i a punk rocker uh i am also a social worker um my nine to five is working to help people experiencing homelessness uh find housing we work to make homelessness brief and temporary um I have worn many different hats throughout the years, uh, one of them being a firefighter and EMT, and again, I'm also an ordained priest. Uh, all of these jobs not only were informed by my political beliefs, that uh, my left-leaning political beliefs that we should help and care for one another, but they also helped further reinforce and inform those political beliefs. Uh, that's a little bit about me. I'm sure that as the show goes on, we will uh, discuss a little bit more in detail about these things. but. Steph, what about you? What makes you tick? Who are you? What are you about? I'm fueled by rage. She's fueled by rage. I was an EMT for the majority of my adult life. Mm -hmm. I uh, worked in the dangerous part of Atlanta. What and do you mean by dangerous? Well, the, the places white people are afraid to go. Yes. And I uh, saw a lot of poverty. A lot of discrimination. Saw the cops do a lot of bad things. Uh, tried to get in the middle of it a few times. Almost got myself killed. Um, broke my back three years ago. And now I make jewelry for a living. Yay! Now, wait a minute. Hold the phone. You said cops do bad things? <laughs> I don't know if that's appropriate for this channel. Uh... Here on this show, we support law enforcement. Uh, it is a thin blue line, and they are the ones that tow the line and protect us from anarchy. Then I'm fucking out. That's a little bit of uh, who we are and what we're about, and kind of how it informs our politics, our beliefs, and. Uh, it's thundering. It's thundering outside. Look at that. One of the formats for this show is uh, we like we were gonna want to start fo uh, putting out some videos and showcasing some music videos or songs that really are speaking to us for the moment and the current uh, climate that we're in in this world and uh, having a discussion about it. What what makes it tick and what what really resonates with us? Uh, why this song resonates with us? And uh, why not for this inaugural uh, show? Why not have a shameless plug and put my own song out there? Uh, this is the first single from the self-titled Father Fury album called Six Feet Deep, sponsored by the Gilded Ferret. So here's the song. I hope you like it. One, two, three, four! Mexicans 
Welcome back to the Father Fury Show. I hope you enjoyed that song. Steph, what did you think about that song? And remember, I'm the one that sang and wrote it, so, you know, my, uh, my feelings are that will be matters hurt. to be. Go ahead. I love Six Feet Deep. It's my favorite song on the track, even though there's a song about me mm-hmm. on there. But it's Fastball. Fastball, yes. Um, but... Six feet deep is that like empowerment music. It makes you want to go out and mm-hmm. you know, system, burn down buildings. You know, burn down buildings, yes. Get your, uh, get your uh, morning star. Mm-hmm. Nice. <laughs> so wait a minute. Wait Build a, minute. a guillotine. Wait a minute. You're suggesting that we burn down property. You know, I think that's a really important discussion here. Uh, because property, indeed, in this country is more important than people. That's why we need Bastion Day here. Oh, agreed, agreed. But, you know, that's that's the thing. Um, I think it's really important that whenever there's a protest or a uh, revolt, that we make sure that the property's okay. Um, I think that that's very important because, God forbid, that something that is insured and can be replaced... Uh, you know, be damaged while black and brown people are being murdered right and left by the very people that we quote unquote claim to uh, uphold laws and help us. So, yes, is the property okay? So, six feet deep, what do you think it's about? Well, you know, it's in the chorus. Everybody has a platform, Mm -hmm. they can have their platform too. Six feet deep. Mm-hmm. If you're a Nazi. Yes, only if you're a Nazi. <laughs> so, yes, let's talk about that for a second. Mm-hmm. You know, that's one of the things that we get all the time, you know, in this country. Well, it's freedom of speech. I think Nazis and people that are interested in killing everybody that don't look like them, they deserve to have an equal platform and an equal say as well, you know, as well as anybody else. Yeah. Why is that bullshit stuff? Well... Fought a war, mm-hmm. called World War II, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. to, uh, you know, rid the world of fascism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it didn't exactly do that. Yeah, while well, promoting our own brand of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, growing up, Nazi equals bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, they, you know, they, they murdered six million Jews, mm-hmm. burnt them, mm-hmm. you know, caged them up, mm-hmm. caged them up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like we're doing at the southern border? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, you know, all the while, you know, Nice America was caging up uh, people who were Asian. Our Japanese brothers and sisters. Yes. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not nice. Those not cages nice. are there for your protection. <laughs> it's not very nice to hate people, you know, mm-hmm. because you think you're superior to them. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't be done. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so we have to get rid of that kind of thinking, mm-hmm. and if it takes, you know, a guillotine, mm-hmm. or a Molotov, mm-hmm. or a morning star, or a machete. <laughs> that twinkle in your a eye is scythe? quite scary. Yeah. <laughs> Donald Trump said recently that, uh... The ideal projectile is actually uh, a soup can. Oh yes, he did uh, say that. You know, he gave us. Uh, he's given us a lot of a lot of helpful tips. He tips from Donald he... Trump. But I guess what you're trying to say about World War II is that you know the Nazis and fascists they did indeed have a platform, mm-hmm. and they were allowed there for a moment to express their views. It didn't and, work out well. Yeah, and the rest of the world came together and uh, they responded to that mm-hmm. uh, unanimously by saying, no, the fuck you don't. Um, so they've had their platform, is mm-hmm. what you're saying. And we've responded in kind by saying, no, that's not the way the world is. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, that is definitely what the song's about. Um, Nazis, yeah, fascists. Uh, white supremacists. I'm lumping you all in into one category with that song. Uh, one, two, three, four! Uh, you are all the Nazis. Hopefully, you know, 
I try to have hope that, mm -hmm. that you know, some people still retain a bit of goodness and that you can change their hearts mm -hmm. and minds. But if it's hopeless, then yeah, six feet deep. Yeah. Well, I'm, you're talking to a former pacifist here. Um, you know, and <laughs> yeah, seriously. You know, I know, know. you're a former pacifist until you met me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, the, the Charlottesville riot that uh, killed Heather Hare uh, can. Uh, changed that theology and that ideology forever for me. Uh, but, you know, I still retain the idea that everybody has the opportunity for redemption and yes. they can change their point of view and their belief system. But if they straight up refuse, mm -hmm. then what do you do? Yeah, you know, I, I'm not really interested in trying to have a dialogue with a Nazi that is trying to kill someone. Uh, hey, hey, I know that you're you're beating this person to death, but let's talk about this for a minute. Uh, let's talk about your hate. No, get the fuck off that person, mm -hmm. and uh, if it takes me whooping your ass to do that, uh, then then that's what's going to happen, and we can have this dialogue later. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, and that's, that's really where we're at. It's not, you know, uh, I can't tell the difference between you Nazis and your, you anti-fascists apart. The Antifas. Yes, the Antifas. Uh... You know, I don't understand that logic there, because one group is saying that um, we truly believe that anybody that does not look like us uh, and is not us deserves to die and no longer live in this planet anymore, and if you give us enough power, we will make that happen. And then the other side is saying, no, that's not the way this is going to go, and we will stop you from killing off the majority of the people on this planet that don't mm -hmm. look like you or think like you. Uh, and we will stop you by force if necessary um, so that that does not happen. Um, there's a huge difference with that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sorry that the liberals can't tell the difference there. Uh, I really, really hate that for you. And I really, really, uh, really, really hope that Biden changes the world like you think he will. And after you voted for him, and if he wins the next election, you can give yourself a pat on the back and go back to sleep. I would be so happy. Mm -hmm. You know, I will eat crow all day long. Mm -hmm. All day long. In front of everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, if that happens. But, I'm, you know, I'm not really a betting person, but if I were, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I don't think he's going to change much of shit. No. No, you know, and it's just... I don't see how, you know, voting for a, uh, a very centrist Democrat, and let's be honest, when we talk about centrist Democrats, we mean, uh, what we mean by that is that they're now where Reagan was in the 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the Democratic Party. Um, and people will be like, well, what about AOC? Oh, well, Lord. yeah, yeah, she's, <laughs> she's very much uh, progressive when it comes to the Democratic Party. And don't get me wrong, I like AOC. I like her a lot. Uh, but saying, hey, we would like to have health care and we would like to have like people to be paid a living wage, mm -hmm. um, that's not that far left. Nope. That's, guys, that's, that's asking for basic human rights. We mainly have a binary system. We do. Uh, we're, we have a very two-party system that is actually just one party. Uh, <laughs> that's true. You know, uh, you have, and the Republican Party has continued to lead this country towards right, towards the right path, not the right as in correct path, but towards the, a, a slope towards the right uh, since its inception. Uh, <laughs> no, so it was, you know, slope towards crazy town frogs. Yes, Alex yes. Jones. <laughs> what is it? S sliding down the curve just like the banana splits. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, uh, and instead of, you know, Democratic uh, people or the Democrats uh, holding a position and saying, no, we're really not going to move, we're like, well, we're going to be to the left of whatever it is that you've slidden now, too. So, uh, there is no leftist party uh, that has any power, seat of power, political power, that is, uh, within this country, because the majority of people in this country think that... Uh, if we can just vote for whoever uh, the Democratic pe Democratic Party uh, offers up as their ideal candidate, just to get us to shut up and just vote, that, hey, once we vote for him and he gets in office on the platform that he's talked about, we can move him left. 
When has that ever happened? Ever. Never. Never. There, the leftist power is all in the people, and uh, we don't have that in D.C., and uh, that's why we have to rely on one another. Just many trigger words, like, mm -hmm. like, you know, the general population. Mm -hmm. They don't understand what being, like, what being to the left truly is, or yes. they don't understand the word socialism, or they don't understand the word communism, or they don't understand, you know, capitalism even. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, it's just, it's, they, they don't have a definition. Well, they're, they're trigger words. Yeah, and you know? they're trigger words, and so, so anytime it gets brought up, it automatically goes from zero to mm -hmm. crazy, and, you know, then fights break out. Oh, yeah. Well, wasn't <laughs> it that we heard today uh, by somebody, they said that, uh, I truly believe that if Joe Biden gets elected, he will enforce and we will slide into communism. No, it's socialism. Socialism, okay. Well, yeah. you know, to them, it's one and the same. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, that's right. Have you met Joe Biden? Have you actually seen him? Do you see what his policies are? That's what my argument was. Do you see what his, <laughs> do you, do you see his voting record? Uh, well, maybe not him, but the people that control him. The people that control him are as capitalist as he is. Mm -hmm. But I digress. When we're talking about uh, the trigger words and things like that, uh, we're also talking about the rights... Uh, Sacred cows. They create these trigger words. Sacred cow tipping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they create these uh, these trigger words or these phrases that uh, are meant to inspire fear. You know, most of us, when we're polled or interviewed, we want health care. Most of us, when we're polled mm -hmm. or interviewed, we don't want to be in endless wars across the globe. Mm -hmm. When we're polled or interviewed, we don't want the cops to fucking kill us. No shit. You know, we want we want people to protect us. I'm a white girl. Mm -hmm. Like, like I am, like the least scary according to the police, mm -hmm. and literally have had the police pull a gun on me twice. Mm -hmm. Pull me over, pull a gun on me. I was ripped from my vehicle one time. Other time I was in my EMS uniform. Still had a gun pulled on me. So yay. <laughs> I mean, if that can happen to me, then imagine what happens to anybody that's a shade other than glow-in-the-dark white. Right, you know, and I think that that's a, a strong conversation about privilege that you're talking about. You know, I think it's uh, how, how ingrained in capitalism do we have to be that when we talk about privilege that our default is, well, I'm poor. What are you talking about privilege? I don't make that much money. You know, I don't make, you know, just because uh, I make this amount of money doesn't mean I'm privileged. That's not what we're talking no, about. No, that's not what it means. It's not privilege. No. Uh, privilege is, as a white, straight dude, I don't have to worry about walking down the street. Uh, and, and the cops randomly and, rolling up on yeah, you and, uh, and saying, you know, hey, you? Yeah, and saying, <laughs> hey, you're walking probable cause. Get your hands out of your pockets. Yep. You know, uh, as a white dude, I don't have to worry about... Um, getting looked at or getting followed going into a uh, store because they're afraid I'm going to pickpocket something. Um, it's crazy. It's ridiculous. As a dude, <laughs> I don't have to worry about um, walking down the street or an alleyway and getting raped. Uh, it's true. And again, as a, as a straight guy, I don't have to worry about stigmas or issues with, uh, with uh, the hang-ups there are with homophobia and transphobia. Mm -hmm. Uh, even though Idris Elba, uh, if you ever are interested in dating guys, um, I'm telling you, that's like the one dude, the one dude, you know? Oh, I'm sure there's a few more. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're talking about sacred cows. We were getting back to that, right? Oh, yeah. Talking about tipping over sacred Sorry, cows. Sorry, I have ADHD, so, you know. That's fine. You can go from sacred cows to, you know, grass to cats. To uh, <laughs> setting up our own stuff. Building a concrete wall. Mm -hmm. Marshmallows. And marshmallows. <laughs> I mean, you know. It's amazing. It's amazing. So. I'm a multitasker. Uh-huh. I think it's great. I do too. A super cow. Super So. Tipping over sacred cows. Getting back to sacred cows tipping over. Yes. 
Uh, yes, absolutely. You know, the right uses a lot of buzzwords and phrases to mm-hmm. scare people into voting. And mm-hmm. anarchy. And uh, one of those, and so we've decided to dedicate portions of our show uh, to uh, kind of toppling over those myths. Uh, the one we're going to do today is one that is apparently scaring the absolute shit out of suburbanite people. And that is, what do we mean when we say defund the police? Oh, yes. Steph, what do you think it means when we say, hey, uh, let's defund the police? I say I think it means cut back their budget, mm-hmm. you know, because they don't need to be militarized. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't need a tank rolling up to my house, you know. Neither does anyone else. Uh, you know, maybe we could send that money towards good because, you know, schools need money. Mm-hmm. You know, badly. Mm-hmm. You know, our, our child that attends public school, mm-hmm. they have uh, those stupid fundraisers to fundraise for the school. Mm-hmm. You know, and all your friends get angry when you're hitting them up for money. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, we could really fund our kids and, you know, in the education they need, you know, to go towards health care. What? <laughs> um, uh, I mean, I could think of about a billion things mm-hmm. that that money could go to mm-hmm. versus, you know, the police who want to just, you know, pretty much kill people. Yeah. yeah. And they get excited about it. Like, y'all don't understand. We both worked in public safety. Yeah. They become like rabid dogs. It's, uh, you know, like the dogs that are chasing like a rabbit. Mm-hmm. And uh, when they finally get it all cornered and they're all foaming at the mouth, that's the way the police respond to people. And I've seen it with my own eyes on more times than I can think. Me too. And, you know, there's different thoughts on defunding the police. Uh, like I mean, Stephanie's, I would like to abolish it. Yeah, Stephanie's, <laughs> view, yeah, Stephanie's <laughs> view is, you know, taking away a large portion of their funding to where they actually do the do the job of it, quote unquote it was intended, which mm-hmm. is uh, community policing, making sure that to people are to protect and serve the public mm-hmm. uh, instead of treating it like uh, they are soldiers going to war mm-hmm. and that every single one of us civilians is the target. Well, I mean, that, that's how they're trained. They're trained mm-hmm. to view everybody as a perk. Oh yeah, yeah, like, absolutely. Everyone. And then you have mm-hmm. the other side of the spectrum, which is where I'm at, and that's full abolishment. Uh, no, yeah, I'm there too. Yeah. Uh, we're definitely <laughs> definitely abolitionists when mm-hmm. it comes to defunding the police. Uh, Pretty sure we can govern ourselves. Oh, yeah. You know, that's the argument that, well, if you take away the cops, who's going to be there to take a report on a crime that was committed 30 hours ago, lose the paperwork, and never call you again? Right. I would say that they're all culpable. Oh, very much so. Very because, much so. you know... That whole argument that there's on there's a few bad apples, you know. Well, hey, if you know there's a bad apple there, mm-hmm. and you have sat there silently and let them be a bad apple, then you're just as guilty. Well, doesn't that isn't the full saying that a few bad apples runs ruins the whole bunch? This is true. Hmm. Yeah, and you know, I think that there would be a little more sympathy out there if there were more cops that stood up, and when these horrible things happened. Uh, instead of protecting the people that did that do these horrid, horrid and heinous acts and atrocities against people of color, uh, if they would be more of them were like, no, this does not represent us. No, instead they doubled down. Um, mm-hmm. It's a conversation that I've had several times. You know that uh, during the during this summer of protests because of the murder of, uh, of black people uh, at the hands of cops back over and over and over back and over back again. Back yeah. Back, 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 um, yeah. You know, and these are just the ones that get publicity. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, we've had protests, and the cops have had how many times to pr- time, oh, time and time again to prove yeah. that Countless they are, times. yeah, to prove that they are not the people that were painting them as, and they have failed that test over and over. They have proved that they are exactly just as ruthless, uh, just as bloodthirsty, uh, and just as much of a dangerous gang uh, as we've claimed they are. Uh, over and over again on camera. Um, so you can't tell me that this is something that can be rehabilitated. You cannot tell me that this is a group that needs better training. Uh, no, we need to abolish it, start over again.
that is that is what we mean when we say the left says defund the police. It is a broad spectrum, and it depends on who you talk to. However, I think the best path forward is abolitionism, uh, or abolishment. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think abolitionism is a word. I don't think it is either. Yeah. Abolishment. Abolishment. I like that better. Yeah, that's an actual <laughs> word. Uh, yeah, so I think that that's honestly the best path forward. And that doesn't mean that uh, an iteration of quote-unquote policing will not exist. It just means that people in a community will come together and take care of the problems themselves. I mm -hmm. think that... Uh, We're afraid, you know, people are afraid of each other now. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, if you, if you have a problem with your neighbor, mm -hmm. walk over there, knock on the door, yeah. say, hey, can you turn the music down? Yeah, you have no Not idea. Not that big yeah. of a deal. You have no, no <laughs> idea how... Uh, how many problems and arguments or possible domestic neighborhood, dis not domestic disputes, neighborhood disputes mm -hmm. that I have solved by bringing, walking over to our yep. neighbor with a six pack and saying, hey, uh, sure can has. we fix this? Um, you know, uh, when I was a firefighter, we had a neighbor that, uh, God, they would party until 3 a.m. And not just like, hey, we got people over, they would party outside till 3 a.m. blaring their music. You solve that problem, uh, yeah, it doesn't make you happy. Is that oh, what's his face would bite the dog? No. Oh. No, that's the guy. <laughs> guy the other side over. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We just call her bite. We just call her bite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the dog bit a cop. It was a good dog. <laughs> good dog. Uh, but anyway, you solved the problem by walking over with a six pack and saying, hey, guys, uh, I see that you're running a little low on your beard. Do you mind taking this inside? Uh, I've got to get up. And I've got to mm -hmm. go to work in the morning. No problem, man. Cool. Yeah. Most people are agreeable. Yeah, most people are agreeable. And you're going to have hostile folks. But that's when you come together as a community to deal with that mm -hmm. hostility. Uh, you don't rely on someone else to solve issues with a mental health crisis. You don't... When, when you're calling the cops, you are literally inserting someone into a situation who's... Only for whose only repertoire and tactics uh, are on their little tool belt, and that includes a gun, a mace, a mm -hmm. uh, a taser, and a nightstick and handcuffs. And you're trying to bring that person in to insert them into situations that will only escalate the problem. Because when if you've got someone that's having a mental health crisis, if you've got someone in the middle of a fight or mm -hmm. or a uh, issue where the person is talking erratically or threatening language and you bring someone in with an actual weapon that is yep, not afraid to use it. Gonna it yeah you have just poured gas on a fire yes. uh and it might have not even have been a fire at that point in time it might have just been but it's fire burning. now yeah it's definitely a fucking <laughs> fire now it's what you call in the fire department a goddamn conflagration uh so that's that's our deconstruction of uh what it means to defund the police uh, that was the cow pivot. That okay, was it. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I think that actually concludes our show this time. Uh, you have any thoughts? Any further thoughts? Anything closing? Mm, not really. Watch Perfect. again. I mean, hey. Yes. Steph says watch the show again. And, and hey. Hey, Jewelry. Gilda mm -hmm. Ferret. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the show sponsored by that. And uh, while you're at it. Buy my album. I'd love to have. Ah, it. yes. I'd love uh, to love to have you as a fan. Mm -hmm. Love you have a, have you as a fan. An Not just if this. Yeah. Wow. A punk rock. Priest. A punk rock. Yes, the only anarchist punk rock priest that you've never heard of. You're also the number one. Yes, we're not telling where we. <laughs> yeah, are. yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for. Uh, Tune it in, and we hope to see you again. And I appreciate you uh, standing by as our as we rambled on our very first podcast. Yes, you can feel free to send us ideas of what you want to hear us talk about, or flip the bird, or flip the bird, whatever. All right, have a great day. <laughs> One, two, three, four.